looking to build. How's everybody feeling tonight? You doing all right? Oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. This side was way louder than this side. How you guys feeling tonight? You doing all right? You having a good night, sir? Madam, yes. Let me ask you this. Are you all as excited that I am that Cat Graham is in the house? Come on, make some noise. Woo! It's crazy. Who's been to build before? If you've been to build for more, make some noise. People have been to build before. Yeah. What do you think? It's not bad, right? Look at all these lights. It's a lot of lights. <laughs> uh, guys, we are super, super excited to have each and every one of you with us. And uh, equally excited, if not more, that our first guest is the inimitable Cat Graham. One more time, make some noise for Cat Graham before I bring her out here. We're excited, right? So the first of many, we are super hyped. It's going to be a, a crazy good night. You picked a fantastic time to join us. So uh, let me walk you through. If this is your first time, welcome and thanks for coming out to Build. What will happen in just a few short seconds, our guest will come on out. She will sit in this chair right here. Joining her on stage, leading the conversation, host and moderator at Build, one of my favorites. You know him and love him, Ricky Camilleri. Make some noise for Ricky. Oh, he's a great guy. Have you seen Ricky before? Yeah, you're gonna love him. Yeah, he's fantastic. So they'll come out, they'll talk for a little. After that, we'll get her off stage, we'll get everything nice and right, and we'll bring her out, and we're gonna have a party, and she's gonna play for us. Y'all excited for that? Good, good, that's where you need to be. Well, listen, I don't have a video or clip or anything like that to run, I just have a damn fine conversation awaiting us right here on this stage. So I'm gonna bring her out in a second, but I can't do it. The room sounds like this, so I'm gonna ask you one more time. As you can imagine, she's used to uproarious applause. Let's make her feel at home. Y'all excited that Cat Graham is in the house? Make some noise, come on. Let's do it right. Keep it going, ladies and gentlemen, and please welcome your host and moderator at Bill, Ricky Camilleri, and tonight's guest, the one, the only, Cat Graham. This is such an honor. I, I can't believe I'm here to help you guys open up the AOL Build Studios. I'm like, I'm completely floored. I'm New so York honored. They declared it a day. Did they, they really? They declared it a day. For Woo! real. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for being here. How are you? I'm so honored to be here. I'm so happy. We're honored to have you. You look amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I should zip that. <laughs> is that supposed to be zipped? It looks great the way I don't know, is. right? It's a little flash of the calf. Make it your own. Make it your own. Own it. Kat, let's talk about what you're going to be performing. Your new, your new song, All Your Love, which you released in November, right? My, my new song, All Your Love. Um, I've already got my earpiece and I'm so ready. <laughs> um, yeah, and I wanted to treat you guys to something a little different. It's very, very rare that an artist will perform songs on their new upcoming album without it being out yet. And I thought that if anyone were to come here and, and experience this very intimate situation with me, they deserve something a little different and they deserve to be a part of this new energy that I wanna bring in for this record. So I wanted to treat you guys to some new music and, and um, yeah. <laughs> There's definitely a new energy when it comes to the single itself. I haven't heard the new songs, I'm super excited to hear them, but all Your Love definitely has a new energy than your previous album. It's a different vibe, right? It's a different vibe. You know, I, I, I stuck to like 90s R&B for the last album. There's a lot of Rhythm Nation in the last album. <laughs> a lot of Rhythm Nation. And this album, um, you know, Babyface I've kind of like latched on to and he's like my partner in crime. And we wanted to do something that, that, that felt funk. Um, that felt pop, that was a bit more inclusive. We called the last record a very selfish record. I just wanted to make the kind of music I wanted to make without the restrictions of a label or people telling me, well, this is what you have to do if you look like you look and you can dance like you look and you're on the show that you're on. You know, and it's like, I just want to make good music, classic music, music that you can listen to in 10 years and be like, you know what, that was the jam. Yeah, your music has never sounded like a label was telling you you should be making pop music for teenagers. It sounds I think like it did someone for a while. <laughs> Admittedly, uh, by you, not no me. No problem. I was happy to have the support, but I think when you come into your own and you re recognize your own power, I think that it's 
it's really amazing when you can make your own music. And I want to inspire other people to create their own art. And how can I do that if I'm making other people's art and I'm not making my own? You know what I mean? Yeah, the new stuff is 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 steeped in disco and funk, like you said. And steeped in it. Steeped, yeah. <laughs> it, I heard that you actually gave the new single to Prince. You showed it to Prince bef before he yeah. passed away. Yeah. Um, for a while, I would send him records, and he was like, I think my biggest critique, and he would be like, why are you making records that you can't even, like, dance to? You know, you should be doing <laughs> records that you can dance to, like Donna Summers and Giorgio Moroder, and I sent him All Your Love and its infancy, and, and he really dug it. Um, he, he, I think he wanted this direction for me for a really long time, um, and um, unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to, to, to do it all with him, but... I will say that Babyface has been such an incredible supporter of mine and my idol, like my absolute idol. I've like, I remember, I think I was 14 years old and I bought like one ticket to the Babyface show and I showed up by myself just to hear him sing. And you know, it's just those moments where there's like two artists that I really idolized and I was able to bring that into my art and um, really kind of pay homage, but also I'm here to bring it back, guys. Like. It's time for the for the era to be to be uh, cracked open again. And I heard you know the all your love video is amazing and it's this wonderful yeah. homage to, to Have drag you guys culture. Seen it? Who's seen it's the all your so love cool. video? It's so cool. Thank you. My uh, House of Brooks is is in it. Shout out to House of Brooks. Can you talk about what House of Brooks is for people who don't know and and wh why that's a part of the video? It's so cool. I don't know how many gays are watching. <laughs> But House of Brooks is my house. Um, it's, a, it's a house of drag queens. If you guys have ever seen a movie, Paris is Burning, if you haven't, please go watch it. The best movie. It's the best movie. And you know, it, it, centers, it centers around um, these different individuals, talented individuals that felt isolated because they either got kicked out of their home for being gay, uh, you know, they weren't, they needed to find a, a family and they took each other in and there's a mother and a daughter and a sister. Like, my mother is Phoenix Brooks. My sister is Alyssa Brooks, who a lot of you follow me on Instagram know. <laughs> and I just wanted to um, bring that back. A house, houses still exists. Um, house of Chanel um, is in the video. Um, house of Mugler is in the video. You know, there's actual houses that are, that are in the video. We want to, and we didn't realize how important the video was going to be and how split America was going to become. Well, the and, video came out just weeks after November 8th. We won't mention right. that, that day, what it was. But how important for, was it for you to have a sort of activist voice in, in the wake of that, especially with this video? That video was already like pre-made, like way, way in advance. Darren Janae, the director, brilliant, brilliant man, saw me standing in front of like an army of drag queens. He knew that that was my my, my vision for myself to stay and represent those that that wanted to be performers that saw themselves in a higher light and um, I just I wanted to do something that felt empowering that felt unapologetic and that felt strong in who you are that you don't it doesn't matter what you look like or where you come from or or how much money you have or your race or your religion that you can you can be powerful and you can own thyself and um, I really feel like that video represented that so I tried to get as many people from my house as possible and from houses all over but you know the the, the underground um, ball scene is still very much um, happening in especially in New York and uh, I definitely want to shout them out because these are people that don't have a lot of money but are but believe in themselves and that's kind of like me, you know, I didn't have a lot of money. I grew up kind of poor and um, here I am. <laughs> I have to ask, you know, with with the video, and you've done some work for Standing Rock. You have an incredible activist voice and a platform that you're clearly using for good as as much as you can. Do you see your role? Do you see a role for you as an activist with your music and your art form in the next few years? I hope that if I'm just really loyal to who I am, I'm an African American, Jewish American. So I think that I am in a in a, in a very um, interesting situation position where I have a voice that maybe a lot of people don't have. I've been an activist for the LGBTQ community for many, many years working with GLAAD. I've been working with different refugee agencies for many, many years. And I'm hoping that 
people can look at me and say, you know what, I dig her music, but I really dig her more, and I, I believe in what she's about, and I hope to just bring people together. Um, that sounds a little corny, but I, I just genuinely want that. I want to bring love and compassion and tolerance into the world, and I believe everyone should be celebrated. And can we say that you see disco as a, as a way to bring people together, <laughs> according to your new album? Why not? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I've always, um, you know, I wasn't really into disco until Prince was like, you know, you should be more into this. He was somebody that when I first met him, I was playing a lot of James Brown and stuff. But then, you know, throughout the time he was introducing me to more funk music and then funk kind of translated into this kind of disco Donna Summers thing. So um, you guys are going to have a really fun show. I am so excited for my friends that are here. I see a couple familiar faces. Are you guys excited? Yeah. I gotta ask, what did what did Babyface think when you started bringing Giorgio Marauder and, and and Donna Summer and Diana Ross into He's the studio? He's so amazing. He's so amazing. I mean, every fr even everything from the Secrets record, which he was supportive of. Um, he was supportive of my R and B journey, and then when I told him, um, you know, all these discussions and these like very intimate conversations I was having with friends, he was like, okay, so let's. <laughs> try this and let's try that and he would tweak things i think the first song that i'm performing i recorded like eight times because he was like no change it not good enough it needs to be better and the thing that i really the thing that kept me going was that he believed i was good enough and you know my idol believes i'm good enough i you know you feel unstoppable so you know i really i really really love him and not just because of what he's done in the industry and all the amazing songs that he's created but for who he is and now you're ending your tenure on the vampire diaries right i am are you doing that in the with the purpose of doing more music and being solely devoted to music i'm a pretty devoted <laughs> musician um <laughs> I, I love music. I love expressing myself. I definitely think this album needs the kind of uh, attention that it deserves that went into it. Um, there's a lot of amazing projects that I have coming out, everything from All Eyes on Me to Where's the Money to... All Eyes on Me is the Tupac, the Tupac Shakur, film. Where you play Jada Pinkett, right? I play right? Jada. <laughs> Does Jada know about it? Have she you knows. Talked to her? She knows. And she gave me her blessing, and I love this woman. Like, I really, really love this woman. So um, even, if she, even if she hated it, I think she would still be very nice to me because she's just a class act. Um, but I hope to God she loves it because she is one of my idols. Um, you know, I think there's some really, really cool things happening, but I really want the focus to be on what I can do to bridge the gap of whether it's being African-American and Jewish, whether it's being... Um, a music artist and an actress, whether it's being an LGBTQ activist and a and you know maybe a voice for refugees that don't have a home, I'm I'm hoping that I can consistently bridge the gap between the two so people start to get it and stop separating themselves from each other. I mean that is my absolute goal. Does that gap feel more difficult to bridge in the in the coming years, or do you feel like you're seeing I, I even think more I got activism? It. You got I it. I think I got this. Cat Graham's gonna lead us, guys. Cat Graham's gonna lead us. I think you're going to start leading us by playing an incredible set. I'm so excited to hear some new songs yes. off the album because I love all your love, and I'm really excited to hear Thank some of the you. new songs. Thank I'm, you. I'm just so honored. I mean, AOL Build giving me this opportunity to perform. I, I don't Please, know. You're giving us this opportunity. I know. I'm, I honestly am so grateful. I, I remember I used to, like, play shows at, like... Um, <laughs> on, like, Santa Monica Boulevard in WeHo, and no one would be there, and you know, no one would show up for me. And um, I think the only person that b ever believed in me from the beginning before Vampire Diaries was, was like... Was AOL built. And, right. and Perez Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> the only people, the person that believed in me. And what's interesting is, is now being able to look into everyone's eyes and, and appreciate them on another level is, is, is something that I, I won't lose. And the humility that comes from that and the appreciation and the connection of remembering where I came from and hoping that I take all of you 
on this journey with me because I'm not interested in doing this alone. I'm not interested in just being some pop star and I don't remember people. I want to connect to people. I want you guys to have a good time. I want you guys to love everything and feel empowered and believe in yourself and, and, and anything that you're into, even if it's the most strange and bizarre thing that you stand behind yourself 100%. And that's what gets me excited. And, and, and that's what makes me fight harder when the times get tough. So I just want to thank you guys for being here. And I love you so much. And I'm so appreciative to everyone in this room. I, I, I really am. I love you guys so so much. Okay, you're gonna kill it tonight. We're so excited to watch you perform. We are gonna let Kat get off the stage, finish drinking her tea, and then you're gonna come back on and you're gonna perform. Nobody go away because Kat's gonna kill it on stage. Kat, thank you so much for being here. We're really looking forward to watching you perform. Thank you so much.